have a look at hybridization. And I think this is probably one of the more difficult concepts to grasp. Um, and in essence, hybridization is just a theory or an explanation of what happens to orbitals when an atom forms bonds with other atoms. So let's take a look first of all at methane. Uh, it's got the molecular formula CH4. And if I analyze this substance, we can work out a few uh, key points. First of all, my carbon is bonded to four hydrogen atoms. Uh, we've got a nice tetrahedral geometry. And in order to form that nice symmetrical tetrahedral geometry, uh, it suggests that we must have four identical sigma bonds. And this is where uh, a bit of a problem was presented to scientists because of the following fact. In order for an atom to form a sigma bond or a covalent bond with another atom, it needs to use a half-filled orbital, which overlaps with a half-filled orbital from another atom to form my pair of shared electrons. So if I take a look at the orbital box diagram for a carbon, and if I focus on the second energy level, so I'm ignoring the 1s orbital, in my diagram here we can see the 2s orbital, which has two electrons, and then I've got my 2p orbitals, uh, which actually only two of them contain an electron. So the problem presented here is that if my carbon atom on its own only has two half-filled orbitals, this suggests that it should only be able to form two covalent bonds. So what chemists are suggesting is that this process of hybridization occurs to allow us to form four orbitals, which are all identical, with uh, one electron in each. So the process of hybridization is just a suggested explanation which represents this process. So starting with an S and then three P orbitals, we have done some kind of mixing or hybridization of those orbitals to form four identical orbitals which have some kind of intermediate energy between the S and the P sublevels. By doing that, you'll also notice that one of my electrons has jumped up to the empty P orbital and then those orbitals have all combined to form uh, four identical orbitals of the same energy. Now importantly, because I have formed those orbitals by combining or mixing an S orbital and then three individual P orbitals, we call each of these orbitals that we've produced on the right hand side an SP3 hybrid orbital. And that's kind of solved the problem for us because initially I only had two half-filled orbitals suggesting carbon could only form two bonds. Now, through this suggested process of hybridization, we've got four half-filled orbitals, meaning it can now form four identical bonds. So if we look in a little bit more detail at the kind of the shapes of these specific orbitals, we started off with an S and three p orbitals and we had two electrons in the s and then two of the p orbitals had one electron through the process of hybridization what we've done now is we've created four equal energy orbitals and you'll notice the shape of a hybrid orbital and it doesn't matter which type of hybrid orbital is like a single lobe it's kind of like almost like a, a single balloon uh, shape so if I now arrange those four hybrid orbitals to minimize repulsion around my, the center point of my atom, we end up with something that looks like this. So we get a nice tetrahedral geometry formed by those orbitals when they spread out. They can each form a nice sigma bond by overlapping along the bond axis with those hydrogens. And has that solved our problem? Well, if we go back to the original diagram of our methane molecule, yeah, we saw a nice symmetrical tetrahedral shape. So this process of hybridization, or this suggested process of hybridization, helps us explain why when we analyze methane, we find a nice tetrahedral structure. Something must have happened, and it's this process of hybridization. Let's take a look at a second example. Let's consider this time um, ethene, where I've now got a double bond between my carbon, my two carbons. 
Uh, again, if we analyze this substance experimentally, we can find that each carbon must be bonded to three atoms. Around each carbon, I see a triangular planar geometry. And if I look at this as a kind of Lewis diagram, I can see that we need three sigma bonds on each atom and one pi bond formed between them. So let's go back to our initial problem. Here is the second energy level of carbon and the orbitals are represented as boxes. And again, this suggests that because I've only got two half-filled orbitals, I should only be able to form two sigma bonds. So something must happen in order to achieve the structure that we've drawn above. Again, we see hybridization occurring. This time, we only need to form three hybrid orbitals to form my three sigma bonds. So exactly as we saw before, one electron is going to be promoted, or we are suggesting that this happens. And then I am combining that s orbital and two of the p orbitals in the process of hybridization, and they end up producing three new hybrid orbitals, which are of some kind of intermediate energy. And you'll notice because I've used an s orbital and two p orbitals, each of those new orbitals are called sp2 hybrid orbitals. And you'll also note that left over in this process is an extra p orbital, which also has one electron. So let's see if we can uh, tie those bits of information together to explain the structure of ethene. Let's draw the diagram of the orbitals again. That's what we started with. After hybridization, again, I've got three kind of balloon-shaped hybrid orbitals, and then I've got a p orbital also with one electron. If I arrange those around each of my carbon atoms, then I end up with a structure that looks something like this. So you'll notice that my three hybrid orbitals are arranged in a triangular planar geometry around the carbon, and you'll notice they can then form sigma bonds. We've got a sigma bond between the carbon and each of the hydrogens on both sides. And then in the middle, my two hybrid orbitals are overlapping to form a sigma bond between the carbons. Now left over in this process, because each carbon has a p orbital with an electron, we find that those p orbitals will overlap above and below that bond axis to form a pi bond. And conveniently for us, that means that we have now managed to explain why we have a triangular planar geometry around my carbon, and we also see a pi bond being formed, which makes my double bond between the two carbons. Okay, let's try a third example. Let's have a look at ethyne. Uh, so again, if we analyze the molecule of ethyne, we can find a few key bits of information here. First of all, each carbon is bonded to two other atoms. It has a linear geometry around each of the carbons, kind of a straight line across my molecule. And from that Lewis diagram there, we can also see that each carbon is going to have to have two sigma bonds, and then there will also be two pi bonds formed between them. So if I go back to my original problem again, well, at this stage, actually, if we're trying to form just two sigma bonds, we kind of have two half-filled orbitals in order to do so. But if my carbon just used those orbitals as they are, we would not get the formation of my pi bonds. Why not? Well, for a pi bond to form, I need some p orbitals overlapping that also contain an electron. So we still need to suggest uh, some kind of hybridization process here. We're going to want to form two hybrid orbitals to form the two sigma bonds, and then we should get left over with two p orbitals to form the two pi bonds. So the hybridization in this case is going to look something like this. Again, the electron from the s orbital must have been promoted at some stage, and then I'm simply combining the s orbital and one of the p orbitals to form my new hybrid orbitals. Because they've come from an s and a p orbital, we call them sp hybrid orbitals. 
And then conveniently for us, we now have two p orbitals left over, which both have one electron in as well. So if we draw some pictures of those orbitals, we can start to uh, piece this together. Let's have a look, first of all, at our start point, uh, as with all three of the molecules. Hybridization occurred in this case to form two hybrid orbitals, and then we have two p orbitals left over. And again, if I arrange these around each of the carbon atoms to minimize repulsion between them, we're going to end up with a structure that looks something like this. So first of all, I can identify my hybrid orbitals on the carbon. One of them forms a sigma bond with the hydrogen. The other forms a sigma bond with the carbon. And on the other side, I see the same process occurring. So there's the three sigma bonds in my molecule. And then nicely for us, my two vertical p orbitals can overlap above and below the bond axis to form a pi bond. And additionally, the other p orbitals, which are drawn in a horizontal plane here, let's maybe highlight them in blue so we can kind of see them a bit more clearly. They are going to overlap either side of the bond axis to form a second pi bond. So this suggested process of hybridization as with before, has allowed us to explain the structure of ethine that we observe. We've got a nice linear geometry around each carbon, and we've also formed two pi bonds from the overlapping p orbitals. Uh, and I think that will probably do it for those three molecules. Hopefully this video was of some help.